Oh, I cannot believe it. Honestly, I cannot explain to you enough how beneficial this has been. Now, if you're wondering what the Murph Challenge is, it's a one mile run, 300 squats, 200 press ups and 100 pull ups in whatever order you want. I did it in 10 sets of 30 squats, 20 push ups and 10 pull ups followed by another mile run and you do all that time. But make sure that you stick around to the end of the video because I've got a very exciting announcement that I'm going to make and you do not want to miss that. Let's get on with the video. So it is the first day of the Murph Challenge. The reason that I want to do this is because for the last two weeks that we've been in lockdown, I've just been at home eating crazy amounts, snacking and just drinking pretty much every night. I feel pretty lethargic. I feel unproductive. I'm not really getting much done. I don't feel like I'm thinking in the clearest headspace as well, just because there's not really much structure to my day. Hopefully I can see some positive results at the end. And you're probably wondering why have you got your top off? It's simply because I am trying to establish if there is some form of body transformation that can take place in doing this challenge. So, without further ado, I'm excited. I'm a competitive person and I wanna beat my times. So let's get into it. I'm getting cramp in my thighs. I was walking for half of it. That was way more difficult than I ever imagined. Day two, let's go. The incline on this run is what kills you. My legs were aching so much from yesterday already. Then going on to do this run at the end. Oh my God. Wow. I just took over a minute and a half of that time. All day my legs have been super achy from yesterday's squats. The run was really difficult, but I managed to actually run it all and not just walk it. So day three, and I'm gonna take one day off to recover because my legs are aching so so much, I literally cannot walk. So it's day four of the Murph challenge. Today I decided to do like a load of stretches before working out. I am still really glad that I took yesterday off to recover because it would have done more damage than actually positive. So it is day five and I am feeling really good about today's workout. I really want to improve my time today. So that is the intention with today. So let's smash it. My legs still are not back to normal. So many people are going to be commenting on my technique. Quite honestly, I don't care. Well, he doesn't like to be told things like So, considering I'm in so much pain with my legs, I consulted Google and it said that I need to get some bath salts and hopefully that'll do the trick. 100% Epsom salts. So I was hoping that bath salt would help last night, but it's not, I'm still in so much pain. My thighs are killing me during these squats. My pull-ups, I'm feeling a lot better with them. I'm able to do the full set all in one go. Felt a lot better on that one. I was a lot more consistent throughout all the sets. Gonna do some stretches, then get ready for day seven tomorrow. I had a stitch throughout that run. I've got a stitch and I'm getting cramp in my leg as well. So today is the first day I feel like I actually gave up. The eight days have really caught up with me. This challenge is really starting to take its toll on me. The days that I don't have as much sleep, it really has an effect on my performance the next day. It's no longer something that I'm feeling energized about. I'm hoping that it's gonna get easier. Oh. I had 10 hours sleep. I was in bed at 11 p.m. because yesterday I was absolutely exhausted and today I feel great. This must be the first time I'm actually feeling fatigued from the press-ups. I had another bad night of sleep last night and that's why I feel exhausted on the run again. Feeling good. About two weeks in, I'm starting to really realize how average my joints are. My thighs have got better. My pain is in here now. If you have any underlying joint problems, doing the Murph is the way to find out. For the next 15 days, I want to keep the first mile and the first five sets under 20 minutes. That way, if I do the second half under 20 minutes, I'll be able to do sub 40. That's the goal. 
First mile run and the five sets, just over 20 minutes. It's mentally draining, it's physically draining. Your whole day revolves around the Murph, preparing for it, eating two hours before. I just hope I start getting fitter so that it becomes less of a debilitating thing in my day. I'm halfway there and I don't want to give up now. Day 20, I'm definitely looking better and feeling a hell of a lot better. I've still got quite a bit of muscle soreness, but that's expected because I've not really given myself a day or so to properly allow my muscles to recover. But I no longer feel like that is what is limiting me and my sets. I think going forward, in order to improve my times, I need to be optimizing the rest that I'm taking, remaining more consistent with my sets. My first five are a hell of a lot quicker than my second set of five. I think my goal towards the end of this Murph challenge is to get under 40 minutes. Why not have a target? That's my goal and that's what I want to reach. Some days you're just going to feel like you don't want to do the set. You want to quit halfway through the set. You just don't want to do it at all. You just want to take a break. Today was one of those days. Three weeks having done this without really a day off or any rest. My joints are hurting around my waist, around my hip. When I'm running, it's like I'm dragging my legs along with me. But hopefully I'm feeling better tomorrow. I really want to get under 40 minutes by the end of this month. I feel like I've reached my capacity. Well, every time I get 47, 48, I'm working out at the absolute maximum. If I'm gonna take eight minutes off this and go under 40 minutes, I'm gonna need a miracle. Maybe I need to give myself a new target because 40 minutes, I can't see myself doing that at this point. Eight days left. I pushed myself too hard on this one. I need a break. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Wow. Nearly passed out on that one. So I've realized that I can't just absolutely bomb it on the sets and then just try and survive on the run. Because today I went as quick as I possibly could to the point where I just had to stop because I was literally going to pass out. Going forward, pace myself better on the sets so that I can sprint the final mile. I'm gonna start eating more bananas, having a protein shake before my sets as well and see if that gives me more energy. A PB by one minute. And that is because I paced myself throughout the sets. I definitely feel like I can take a few more minutes off that time if I pace myself. It's way too hot today. The heat definitely makes a difference. Makes it so much harder. I feel so dehydrated even though I'm drinking so much. I look like I've just got out of the shower. Because of this Murph challenge, every single day I'm eating so much more than I ever was before. Right now I'm gonna have a barbecue with the family. Five days left. Cut my hair today. I think I did quite a good job. Not the best job of the Murph though. I think one major takeaway from doing this fitness challenge every single day. Can you not interrupt while I'm trying to record? That's really off putting. I think one major takeaway from doing this fitness challenge every single day for 30 days is the days that I do stretches following a workout, my muscles feel nowhere near as sore and they feel a lot better. So yeah, if you're going to do this challenge every single day, definitely do dynamic stretches following your workout. I'm going to have to start working out when the sun goes down from tomorrow onwards. It's just way too hot. I feel, I genuinely feel like I'm going to pass out. I've never run so hard. Wow. So close. Oh. Already I've taken nearly half an hour off my first time. Unbelievable. It's day 29 and my plan for today's workout is to not go too crazy on the set. I want to use today as a little bit more of a recovery, maintain good technique, but make sure that I'm totally refreshed and feeling at the top of my game for tomorrow's workout, which is my final day. I actually took that relatively easy and I'm quite surprised 
how well I did, 43 minutes. All the sets I was really consistent with. I took them quite easy, didn't take too much rest between them. And yeah, just paced myself in 43 minutes. It is day 30 and I cannot believe that I finally made it here. I'm so, so excited for today's Murph. I'm actually feeling in a similar way that I used to feel on competition day when I used to swim. Super energized, full of adrenaline. And I do feel like that is what is gonna give me the competitive advantage today to beat my target time. I'm halfway there, 19 minutes. Thirty nine fifty one. Honestly, I cannot explain to you how good it feels to have finally finished. There's been so many occasions where, you know, I just wanted to quit and I didn't want to continue, but day 30 and I am so, so glad that I did. And there you have it. That was my 30 day Merv challenge. And that's the end of the video. Only kidding, this video would not be complete without me giving you guys some real insight into my experience having done this challenge for the last 30 days. So let's start off with the main thing that you guys are probably interested to hear about, which is the body transformation that took place. When comparing photos from day one to day 18, it was really clear that my body physique had changed. I look way more athletic, I look more defined, my pecs look bigger, my back's fuller, my ass is bigger, and just in general, my physique just looked a lot more athletic. But then when comparing day 18 to day 30, we didn't actually see the same kind of change. And that obviously makes me ask the question, well, what is the thing that changed from day 18 onwards? I actually ended up buying a high calorie protein powder online and was taking that every single day. And that clearly suggests that a high intensity workout alone isn't enough to positively impact your physique. It's your diet that really counts. So focus on that as well, if not more. Next, let's talk about the things that I found made this challenge more difficult. The first thing is sleep. Lack of sleep had the worst effect on my performance the next day. It is the most important thing when doing this challenge. The second thing is the temperature outside. If it's too hot, that's gonna make you sweat a lot more and that's gonna make you dehydrated. So the next thing is obviously stay hydrated, drink a lot, throughout the day. And the last thing would be eating two hours before your workout, because otherwise you'll learn the hard way, like I did on day one. So with those things in mind, making it worse, what are the things that I found made my Murph challenge better and more bearable? The first and probably the most important thing would be stretching. Stretching before your workout, after your workout, is gonna make the whole experience a lot easier and better the day after. The second thing would be listening to music that gets you pumped. That for me is techno, it's tech house, anything over 120 BPM. It makes me think that I'm back in Ibiza. I'm not in Ibiza and I don't think I'm going anytime soon. And the third thing that I'd say is have a goal time by about day 20. That for me was 40 minutes and by having a target, it allows you to work towards something. So definitely set a goal by day 20. Now there is just one more thing that I do wanna to talk to you guys about. Midway through this process, my grandfather sadly passed away at the age of 96 after he contracted the virus. Everybody obviously deals with a bereavement differently and doing this Murph challenge really allowed me to keep my mind active, allowed me to remain positive. So for that, this Murph challenge has been pretty profound. Now, in order to thank the NHS for their incredible efforts, caring for my granddad in his final weeks, I have decided to do a 30 day fitness challenge called the Harry Challenge in memory of my granddad in order to raise money for the NHS. The challenge is going to consist of a mile run, 300 sit ups, 200 press ups, 100 burpees and then another mile run. I'm going to be sticking the link in the description below and I will be so so grateful if you guys at home could donate. I'm really hoping that we get £5,000 in donations and if this video gets 5,000 views, if just every single person at home donates £1 then you do the math.
It also gives you guys at home something to look forward to as you know that that is going to be one of the future videos, future? Future videos that are coming to this channel. So make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and press the bell button to get notified every single time I post and you'll be one of the first people to see that video when it gets posted. But also I'm planning on doing a follow-up Q&A video on this Merv challenge, answering any of your questions that you may have. So leave a comment in the comment section below and I will include your question in the next video. Please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps. Follow me at ChristianMJC on Instagram where I'm going to be posting regular updates of my experience doing the Harry challenge over this next 30 days. So if you want to stay connected, follow me there. Thank you so much for watching this video and I shall see you guys in the next one.